Great, we're out here, we're at, uh, we're at the Dunlop Preserve, or what's also known as the Brooktondale Meadow. It's one of the Cornell natural areas. And uh, my name's Anurag Agarwal. I'm a professor in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. And our class, Field Ecology, is out here with us uh, this early September. You know, field Ecology is a really special class because it takes advantage of the tremendous natural areas that are all around Cornell, uh, many of which are managed by the plantations. And um, our class, Field Ecology, spends every Friday afternoon, 12.30 to, to, to 4.30, out at one of these Cornell natural areas, uh, doing exercises and independent projects, learning the principles of ecology hands-on in the field. So we're here at the Brooktondale Meadow today, uh, working in goldenrod fields, where uh, the students are studying a little insect, a membracid or a tree hopper, that sucks the sap of uh, the goldenrod plants. And there's quite a, uh, as the students discover, a remarkable set of interactions that occurs on that goldenrod plant initiated by the feeding of the membracid insects. Yeah, this exercise works uh, ideally where the students themselves um, observe and then through their observations develop questions and teach themselves in a way. And so the idea is we start the field, ex the field exercise today with an hour-long solo. Each student is out there, plopped down in front of a goldenrod plant where this interaction is occurring. And they're asked to observe write down field notes, and we give them a set of about 10 questions that simply uh, give them ideas about particular things to notice. Tap the stem with the tip of your pencil and what do the ants do, those kinds of things. Our main goal is a hands-on experience where the students, um, through a very small amount of guidance, are able to make observations and really own uh, those observations in a way that then generate ideas about explaining the patterns that they might see. Then we break down into uh, small groups and we have, uh, we share observations first, the highlights that as some students notice this, other students notice that. In fact, that or the predation. The predation by the by membracid. By the membracid, yeah. And what did you? Um, I think it was the membracids because there are other plants with the same vines running around them that were not dead and didn't have the membracids. Okay. Interesting. Sophie? Um, I guess with the face, how the membracids face, I was seeing a lot of them face away from the stem and gravitationally downward. So I was wondering if that was because like, one of the fluids pools more easily like that and they have more access. Interesting. I mean, my observations seem pretty similar to most people's. I thought it would be, uh, for me, most of the membracids seem to face, the, if they were on the stems, so there was definitely two different types of aggregations. Usually I saw one on the, on the main stem, which tended to be a bit larger, more individuals, but then there was also like satellites, smaller aggregations on the leaves. Um, so I guess there could be something interesting with um, maybe like maximum size, well, that what they'll aggregate on the stem versus the leaves. Um, and they tended to face, on the stem they tended to face up towards the top of the plant and on the leaves they tended to face out towards the, like the point of the leaf. Um, and then we break down into a smaller set of groups where we try to hone down a particular scientific question and a hypothesis that the students can then address uh, by collecting data at the end of the afternoon. Stem longer mm -hmm. if it was a taller plant. Mm -hmm. the, the plant that I was looking at was head and shoulders above any other goldenrods around it. So that kind of makes me think, does, is it possible for the membracid interactions to cause the plant to produce more growth hormone, uh -huh. maybe causing it to grow faster? And that would sort of line up with the new shoots coming out of the sides as uh -huh. well. Uh, going back to add a few exoskeletons of the black ones on my leaf, so that led me to believe that they were like nymphs and that the more brown ones were the adults. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea here is that Perhaps we concentrate what might be, typically in the life of a scientist, be a sort of two-year exercise between making observations, asking questions, applying for grants, collecting the data, writing the papers. We try to compress that down into a very short period of time so that the students can get experience from the very start of the scientific process through the data collection. And then over the course of the next week, they write a laboratory report on their experience. Our hope, though, is that given that most of biology 
occurs out in nature. Bio biology, by its definition, is a natural science. We hope that by teaching a field ecology course, the students are able to experience nature and to learn how to test questions about nature in the environment that it matters most outside.